Dave, like she said, from Crunch Fitness. Um, basically, I just want to tell people the hardest part of getting started on a fitness journey is getting started on a fitness journey. Um, you know, the most important step is that very first step. You know, everybody has in their head, oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to have a New Year's resolution, but it doesn't work unless you get started. You know, so I always encourage people, take that first step. Do not wait for New Year's because you're going to be in the bunch of gym with a bunch of wishy-washy people. If you really want to start, start now, okay? Um, some of the things when you get started, you know, I listed a couple basic do's and don'ts. You know, some of the things you want to do is set realistic goals. You know, a lot of times people will say, oh, I want a body like Angelina Jolie. Well, okay. So do I. No, just kidding. But, <laughs> you know, a lot of people, we want, we want to get the best version of you. You know, not everybody's body type is the same. Not everybody's height, weight, structure, any of that is the same. So our goal is to make you the best version of you. Um, you know, so people always want to say, oh, I'm going to try this new diet. I always tell people, don't try diets. Diets are temporary. Um, you know, I tell people there's a reason that word starts with die, because most of the time you feel like you want to die. Um, but if you just eat healthier, you can see some great results. You know, like she mentioned with the Juice Plus, you know, adding that into your everyday routine, it's going to help. Um, you know, find a partner to work out with. You know, find a friend and that's going to come with you. Find a friend, um, get a personal trainer. You know, take group classes, things like that, Some, somewhere where you're going to be accountable. You know, a lot of times people just think they can do it on their own. And honestly, if you haven't done it on your own to this point, it's going to be hard to do it on your own going forward. You know, we always like to stay in our comfort zone. And our comfort zone got us what we have now, whether it be health, finances, relationship. Your comfort zone got you what you have now. And if you're not comfortable with that, you need to leave your comfort zone. So... If you come over to Crunch, we're going to get you comfortably uncomfortable. Um, you know, exercise regularly. You know, set a plan of what you want to do exercise-wise. You know, because if you don't have a plan, you're not going to succeed. You know, it's just like if your kids have sports, you make sure they get to those sports every single time because it's a plan. But you have to do the same thing for yourself. You know, I tell people all the time, your health is the one thing you have to be selfish about because you're the only one that's guaranteed to be with you the rest of your life. Um, diversify your workouts. You know, you want to mix it up. A lot of times people say, I want to tone up and I want to lose weight, so I'm going to jump on the treadmill. Well, the treadmill will get you started, but you need to mix up your, your routines. You know, people stick to the same routine and then they plateau. You know, and I tell people all the time, that's like taking first grade 12 times and think you're going to pass high school. So you need to always change it up, always shock your system. You know, you hear things like the P90X, and they talk about the muscle confusion. That's nothing new. It's just like changing your workout. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to change your workouts. You know, that way you're always seeing the results. Um, you know, a lot of times people get stuck on watching the scale. I always tell people, do not focus on the scale because the scale can lie to you. You know, and unfortunately, with women, women have been said, well, you need to be this size, you need to weigh this much, and I think that's completely unfair because it does not take into consideration muscle. It does not take into consideration a lot of things. So you can have somebody who their BMI says they are 100% healthy, but their body fat be out of whack. Or you can take somebody like LeBron James, arguably one of the best athletes on the planet. His BMI says he's obese because they don't take into consideration his muscle mass. So do not be afraid to lift weights and gain a little bit of muscle. You know, you're not gonna get big and bulky by accident. I had a woman tell me one time, and I told her I'll use this analogy forever. It's like thinking you're gonna accidentally get a PhD. You know, you will not accidentally get big and bulky. <laughs> um, you know, if you have any type of medical issues, always check with a doctor first, you know, and if you ever come across a doctor that tells you you should not exercise, get another one. Um, eating healthy is, is one of the keys. You know, you can exercise all you want, 
but I tell people you can never outrun your fork. So, you know, you always want to eat healthy. You know, a lot of times people say, oh, well, I eat healthy all the time. But eating healthy and eating right are two different things. You know, and eating right for one person may not be eating right for another person. So we need to make sure you have somebody with a little extra knowledge that can teach you how to eat right for you to maximize your results. Um, you want to pay attention to the types of food that you're eating. You know, convenience foods are typically not good. You know, you see those 100 calorie packs. Yeah, it's 100 calories of garbage, you know. But you can get 100 calories of something healthy, and it actually fill you up. But, you know, those 100 calorie packs, you eat one. Okay, that was good. Didn't fill me up, so I'm going to grab another one. It's only 100 calories. And those slowly start to add up on you. Um, you always want to keep good foods in the house. You know, people say all the time, well, I have to keep that stuff because I have kids. Your kids don't have to eat that. <laughs> you know, and I'm not trying to deprive anyone's kids. My kids eat fruit snacks and stuff like that as well. But my kids will also sit down and eat a salmon dinner with broccoli and things like that. You know, so if you present it to them, they'll eat it. So you have to be the catalyst that helps the family stay healthy. You know, whoever does the grocery shopping in the house, they set the tone for what the meals are going to be the rest of the week. Um, you know, you want to pay attention to labels and things like that. You know, you can read a lot of different things. If you can't pronounce most of the stuff on the label, you don't need to eat it. You know, we need to try to get as many natural foods in our system as possible. Um, you know, whether it be from fresh vegetables, you know, healthier meats. You know, you want to be careful with some of the meats that you're eating as well because a lot of them have a di lot of different hormones and things like that. Um, so, you know, you definitely want to be careful with what you're putting into your body. Water. Most people do not drink enough water. Um, water can do quite a few different things for you. You know, it'll help hydrate the body. Obviously, it'll help make the skin look better. It'll help with digestion. It'll help fuel the muscles. It'll help prevent injuries, reduce inflammation, things like that along the way. You know, portion size over the years have changed considerably. You know, if you look back to what a Coke used to be versus what it is now, you know, you go to the movies, you used to get a little bag of popcorn, that'd be great. Now they give you the endless tub of popcorn. Um, it's just because we've become an overindulgent society, so we need to start scaling back on what we do and realize what a portion size is, a true portion size. You know, a lot of times people will say, oh, I eat healthy, so I, I eat Chipotle. Well, most people don't realize that a Chipotle bowl is two and a half servings. You know, they'll sit and eat a whole bowl. I'm like, oh, it was healthy. It was, well, you just ate two and a half servings without realizing it. So, you know, you have to be careful with that. You know, if you do drink something out of a bottle or eat something out of a box, pay attention to what the actual serving size is. Because most of the time on a bottle, it won't say until you read on the back that it's two and a half servings. Um, you know, again, I can't stress enough about having an accountability partner or somebody be there with you as you go through. You know, and when you start your fitness journey, tell people what you're doing. That way they can hold you accountable. You know, it's just like if you're going to start saving for something, you know, tell people what you're doing because they're going to hold you accountable for it. You know, whatever it is, you know, you need that extra accountability, that extra motivation as you go through. Again, having a personal trainer, you know, I tell people all the time, there's a big difference between working out and training. You know, people work out all the time and don't necessarily see results. But what a personal trainer will do is they will design a workout specifically for you based on where you are now and where you're trying to go. And they're going to keep modifying that workout for you along the way so you're always seeing results, you're always maximizing what you want, and then it's also an accountability issue. You know, it's easy to tell yourself, hey, I'm not going to go to the gym today. But if you know that person's waiting on you, you know, you're going to be there. Also, before you go supersize your meal, you've got to realize you're going to have to tell that trainer the next day, yeah, I was bad, I ate a supersized meal with a, a shake. You know, so you have to tell them that. 